What's up YouTube and welcome to my pickups video for the month of April 2021. Actually got out and did some travel this month and, uh, and went to a video game convention. You remember those? <laughs> so uh, at the beginning of the month I did a road trip, took a few days off work and went to Nashville, Tennessee as well as Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville was really my goal uh, because I'd been through it before but I'd never really stopped. So I spent a couple days in Knoxville, came back, spent a day in Na Nashville and uh, worked my way home. Um, pretty good trip. I got some games I'm going to show you from that trip. And then um, later in the month, just recently, the last couple weekends, I guess it was, I went to the Bloomington Normal Illinois Game Convention. And um, it's not that far from my home base of St. Louis, about a three-hour drive. So I went up there, spent a night, and went to the uh, con first thing in the morning. Uh, really good con, to be honest. Um, I, I think there's just a lot of vendors that are pent up with uh, things that they want to sell from all the lack of cons and cancellations that have taken place uh, due to the pandemic and then just kind of the, the rebuilding stage that we're all in. So um, overall, the event was great. Um, can highly recommend it. I think it's been going on for the last few years. It just somehow wasn't even on my radar. So now I'm kind of hooked and I want to go back next year. Hopefully it'll be uh, even bigger and kind of back to normal uh, when we get to that point next year. So uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the stuff I got this month. Um, pretty heavy Sony months, so we're going to start off with Sony systems. But honestly, I got a mix of games for just about every system this month, so uh, some pretty good variety and some stuff I was looking for and then some stuff I just impulse bought at the con and also on my road trips. So um, we'll go ahead and start off with PS1 and start off with the game that uh, I have owned on the PS1 for a while, which is One Piece Mansion. This is a very quirky Capcom game, and I've always wanted to play it. The problem is my copy I've owned for years is sealed, and I got it way later than when uh, <laughs> sealed games were starting to dry up, so I just I felt bad opening it. Uh, but this was one of my finds at the con, and um, I may actually just sell off my sealed copy because now I don't really need it, and I don't really try to collect sealed games, but I have always been interested in this game. I don't really know why I didn't buy it when it first came out. I think there was just so many uh, good games coming out for Dreamcast at the time that this one got put on the back burner, but I remember I was even pretty interested, interested in getting it at that time. So uh, looking forward to playing this. It has a pretty unique art style to it that um, I think you saw in a couple other Capcom games like Under the Skin on PS2. Pretty sure it was the same team that worked on that one, too. So, looking forward to playing that. Um, this next one I'm going to show you was uh, something notable from my road trip to Tennessee. I stopped off in Clarksville, Tennessee on the way out there. Um, just got some gas and, and uh, mapped out that there was some game stores in town that I hadn't been to before. There's a couple I had been to there, but there was one that showed up on Google that I was not aware of. So, I happened to stop at that store. And what was very weird to me is I got recognized. <laughs> so the owner of uh, Game Hub in Clarksville, Tennessee, which is a brand new store to town, um, recognized me from my videos and uh, introduced himself. And we hit it off very well. I ended up spending two or three hours in the store. And there was another customer um, who was a member of the, the military that was in town. And uh, he was a huge game collector, too. So we all hit it off and had a great time just talking. So... Um, didn't really buy a whole lot of stuff because I think I was just too busy talking the whole time I was there. But I did get this game, which is Blade for the PS1. Um, I have never seen the Blade movie, believe it or not. And, um, you know, it's not really high on my radar, but this game I wanted for a specific purpose. This does complete a subset for me. And uh, hopefully I can make that video for you in the next month and show off what that subset's all about. Uh, but if you ever do find yourself in Clarksville, it is a great game store. The, the inventory is really mind-boggling in this day and age when most of the game stores are wiped out. They have a huge inventory, especially of PS1, PS2, and PS3 even, um, that uh, you'll find in the store. So can highly recommend the store if you ever happen to be passing through Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, one other PS1 game I got this month is another game I needed for a subset that I also just finished by getting this game, and that is Street Fighter the Movie The Game. <laughs> uh, this game is not good and never has been good, and I actually have owned it on the Sega Saturn for a really long time. Uh, but I wanted it on the PS1 just for the subset that I just finished, and uh, that's another video that I'm hoping to make in the next month. Um, this game has really gone up in price in the last year, and uh, overall this used to be like a really cheap game you could get for the PS1. Um, I don't really know why the PS1 version is even worth more than the Saturn version right now, but uh, this was not cheap to get, and I ended up buying it off Amazon because they actually had a better price than uh, the sellers were on eBay, so... Um, not something I'm super excited about playing by any means, but it does finish the subset, so I had to had to grab it. Uh, PS2, I got one game. This came from the game convention. I got um, Gun Survivor 2 Biohazard Code Veronica. So this is 
one of the uh, Japanese exclusive, maybe Europe, Europe got this game, we did not in the U.S., uh, uh, GunCon 2 games for the Japanese PS2. And I'm trying to get the full set of all the GunCon 2 games. I have all the U.S. ones, but now I'm trying to go for all the Japanese exclusives or Japanese region games. Um, this is one of the four, I think it was, total um, gun, what do they call it, gun survivor series games that Japan got, and then we only got three of those four in the U.S. One of them, they took the gun support out for the PS1. This one we never got. Uh, the third one was the uh, Dino Crisis-related side story game that does support the GunCon 2. And then we did get Resident Evil Dead Aim in the U.S. that also does support the GunCon 2. So kind of a convoluted series, uh, but I did want to get this one. Just stumbled on it at the con. This was something that was kind of on the back burner for me to get online. And uh, finding this from one of the vendors at the con, it was a no-brainer. So just gets me a little closer to that subset on the uh, Japanese GunCon 2 games. Um, if you've been following the gaming news, you know that PS3 has gone through, and PS Vita have gone through a whirlwind of uh, revelations this month, as in, like, you're not going to be able to download them anymore, so there was this huge frenzy for download games. I don't do download games by and large, but what there also was a frenzy for was PS3 physical stuff. So, it may be a temporary hype train, but guess what? I bought into the hype train and uh, really expanded my PS3 library a lot this month. Um, with some stuff that I kind of, again, had on the back burner to get. I saw how the prices were spiking. I found some of these at good deals at the con and, and uh, out in my travels and figured, you know what, I better get them now. And even if the prices do go down a little, I'm not going to get burned on these. So we're going to take a look at quite a few PS3 games in this, uh, this stack here. Uh, first one of these is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. This game is a multi-platform, and um, it's not even the most valuable of the Spider-Man games on PS3. But I uh, just happened to grab this one at a decent price when I was out in my travels. So went ahead and got that. Uh, this one I'm, I'm now interested in playing. This is Shadows of the Damned. Um, this is a game that I probably have walked by a million times in my, my uh, game hunting because the EA logo put me off and I just thought it was some, you know, just garbage EA uh, developed game. Turns out this is a Pseudo 51 game, which um, I'm not a huge fan of Pseudo 51, but I do try to play most of the ones that I can get my hands on. Um, and definitely looking forward to playing it now that I know it has a little bit more pedigree to it than I thought initially. Um, ended up finding a uh, new old stock, new sealed copy of this at one of my local stores. I've already opened it because I intended on playing it, but then I ran out of time and I haven't popped it in yet. So this is uh, one of the games that I want to try out very soon in my, my stack of stuff I got this month. Uh, this is one that really shot up, and um, I know I can get this on the Xbox 360 for much less. I see it pretty often, actually. But the PS3 version has really dried up of this game. This is Ashura's Wrath or Asura's Wrath. Um, I have not had a chance to pop this one yet either, but or play this one yet either. But uh, definitely looking forward to checking it out. And I got this one at the con at uh, much lower than market price. So very happy to grab this game as well. Uh, one that is probably a much more common game, that, but has been going up, and it is a PS3 exclusive, is Heavenly Sword. Um, not one that was, again, very high on my radar to play, but I got this one for like five bucks at the con, so I figured might as well give it a shot for that. And, um, you know, if I don't like it, I can always sell this one on, because it is starting to go up a little bit. Uh, another one I got at the con that is also going up is uh, Fist of the North Star Kin's Rage. You can also get this game on the 360, and I think that one's much less, but um, I kind of wanted to get this on the PS3. Um, kind of have mixed feelings about some of these Koei Tecmo, um, you know, licensed anime games that they've put out. A lot of them just kind of use the same game engine and then slap a, a license on it and call it a day. Um, but this one, you know, I think it got decent reviews, so looking forward to checking it out. Um, there also is a sequel to this one. I can't remember if it's a PS4 game or if it was Japanese exclusive. I'd have to look it up, but uh, I know I've seen it in passing through my mind at some point, so... Uh, maybe another one to get if I like that one. Uh, another one I got that um, I honestly thought this game would be a little bit more than it, it was. This one still actually is really cheap. This is uh, Nino Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Witch. Um, I remember this game had a lot of uh, publicity when it first came out, and then I kind of just completely forgot about it. So just another PS3 game that um, hopefully I'll get around to trying at some point, but uh, not super high on the radar with all this other stuff to play. Um, this one was kind of a upgrade. This is uh, Sengoku Basara, Samurai Heroes for the PS3. I actually had this game on the Wii and I've owned it for several years, but uh, when I saw there was a PS3 version and I could get it pretty cheap, I decided I would sell my Wii version and then just keep this one. So um, probably this one is a little bit better just because the PS3 has quite a bit more power than the Wii does, so I figured this would be the better uh, console to own the game on. Uh, another PS3 game that is a um, Suda51 game as well is Killer is Dead. 
Um, I used to see this game absolutely everywhere, and that's why, again, I just was like, oh, I'll just pick that up some other day. It's it's going to be cheap forever. And then, lo and behold, this one is also now going up. So I uh, figured, again, just, you know, fear of missing out, I might as well go ahead and grab it now before it's too late. Uh, the other thing I think that's driving these PS3 game prices is just GameStop inventory has dried up, and they're just not actively pursuing it, and people aren't actively trading it in um, like they were three or four years ago. So, you know, again, I, I think we've seen this pattern with prior systems where... As soon as GameStop kind of starts getting out of it, then the prices start to go up, and then later on they may settle or they may continue to go up, just depending on how people view the console over time. Um, so this next one is Folklore. This is one of the PS3 exclusives, so this is one I definitely wanted to get. Um, I've heard mixed bag things about this one, but I know that uh, for an early PS3 game, this was considered you know one of the big reasons that you, you want to get a PS3 that's kind of unique to it. So um, looking forward to definitely checking this one out too at some point. Um, I also got X-Men Origins um, Wolverine Uncaged Edition. This is, I think, the most enhanced version of this game. It's also on 360 um, and a bunch of other consoles, but uh, I figured the PS3 version probably is a little bit better on this. So, again, went ahead and grabbed it. And then I promise I'm almost done with PS3. If you're not a PS3 fan, <laughs> the last game I got is Never Dead. Um, again, this one has very mixed reviews, but um, you know I found this one very cheap and figured I'd give it a shot. Um, another one that you can also get on 360 and it goes for less. So, you know, again, if you uh, want to save a few bucks on some of these games, 360 is probably the way to go for right now, but uh, the PS3 games are, are definitely going up. So that probably nearly doubles my PS3 library. It's not a system that I've ever bought a ton of games for. I know I've had a lot of people commenting on my videos like, when are you going to do a PS3 video? And I never really felt like I had enough content to do one. So now that um, I'm building up my library, Maybe give me another month or two, and then we can look at doing that um, with, with some of the stuff that I'm now discovering that is worth grabbing um, or worth giving a play to. So that is all the Sony stuff for the month. We're going to move on to other consoles. Um, this was another find from the con and one that I was very happy to find in person because usually I end up buying games for the system online. Is uh, I found a Neo Geo CD game. There was a very nice seller that I talked to for a while who was uh, able to sell me Ninja Combat for the Neo Geo CD. Um, this game was actually a launch title for the Neo Geo AES, so it's a very early uh, AES game initially, and so it's a little bit rough around the edges. <laughs> I've certainly played this game before. Um, I do like the ADK Ninja series games, but I do think Ninja Combat is probably not the most exciting. Um, next, I want to get Ninja Commando. I know that one's quite a bit better and uh, more my taste, so looking forward to grabbing that, but um, I got a good deal on this at the con. I'm definitely not going to cry about it. Uh, most of the other games that the seller had were fighting games, and unfortunately I'm just not really looking for the fighter games on uh, Neo CD, but I, I sure hope somebody else grabs them, because it's it's very rare that you can find these uh, import Neo CD games in, in the you know in person or in, in a, a con type setting. Uh, most of them you end up importing from Japan or getting off eBay from a, you know somebody selling in, uh, locally. So anyway, very happy to get that one for my Neo CD. Um, I did get one Xbox 360 game. This is one that I actually would like to get on PS3, but I can't ever seem to find it on PS3, and it seems to even be drying up a little bit on the 360 now, so I figured, again, I better grab it before it's too late. <laughs> and that is uh, Tornado Outbreak. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this one, but, um, you know, hopefully it's decent, and I know uh, the PS3 game, like I say, has definitely shot up in the last month, so maybe there is something to it, and I'll give that one a try. Uh, next is actually my big splurge of the month. This was something that I saw in my uh, travels in Knoxville. I found it in one of the game stores out there. And the condition on this, I just couldn't pass it up. It was a game that I was looking for just to have, honestly, just cart only. And then when I saw this beautiful condition, um, complete copy, I decided to grab it. So I grabbed uh, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness for the N64. Um, I am not a huge N64 uh, kind of guy, but this is one that I always wanted to check out. Um, I have played the original Castlevania 64, and I remember just just completely disliking it when it first came out, but I know this game fixed a lot of the issues with that, and then kind of, it's kind of like a 1.5 version of that game. It's uh, based on it, but it has a lot of enhancements and new storylines, so um, definitely like the Castlevania series, and this is one of the kind of holes I saw in my collection that I just didn't have. Um, this one was really complete. It's got the, um, the booklet, it's got the warranty card for it, the precautions booklet, all that kind of jazz inside. Um, the cartridge is in great shape, too, so definitely was happy with um, paying up a little bit on this one because I, I think the prices on it are kind of all over the map, and condition makes a big difference with some of these cardboard uh, case games like this. So very happy to get that one um, in my collection. Um, it also supports the expansion pack, too, so now that I have an expansion pack, I can take advantage of that. 
So that is all the console games I got this month. I'm going to move on to portables. I actually did buy quite a few portable games this month, too. And uh, what's kind of weird is I really focused in on Game Boy Color. This is a system that was kind of like fourth in order of uh, games that I chase uh, from Nintendo portables. Like, typically I go after original Game Boy first, then probably Game Boy Advance, and then DS, and then Game Boy Color, like, way beyond <laughs> behind those. Um, I, you know, I had a Game Boy Color um, back in the 90s, but it just really didn't stick as much uh, as far as the library over time. But now I'm seeing there are some actually some pretty cool games out there that are worth grabbing. So um, got a few Game Boy Color games cart only. First one of these is one that uh, I didn't even know existed until like a month or two ago. This is Extreme Wheels. <laughs> and this was uh, that section of the late 90s where everything had to be extreme. Uh, this is a game I would have typically just passed right by and not even given a second thought to, even if I had seen it. But I read up on it and I found out this is actually Japanese developed by um, a developer called Spike that I really like. And uh, now that I've played it, it's honestly like a modern, a more modern upda uh, updated version of Excite Bike. So uh, very similar type gameplay to that. Um, and kind of has like some Kunio-kun st <laughs> Kunio style music in it. So if you like that kind of thing, um, definitely worth checking out. This game does not come up for sale very often, but there is a power seller on eBay that for some reason had several copies with no picture. Um, I think I paid like $3 for this and it came in great shape. So um, I didn't think he has like one or two more in stock. So if you're interested, you might want to check that out because uh, they're either this game is either not listed at all or if it is, it gets like really expensive, especially if it's complete. So um, I think this is kind of one of the, the unknowns of the Game Boy Color library. Uh, another weird one I bought, this is a game I would have completely passed by <laughs> until about a month ago. This is WWF Betrayal. Um, I am not a pro wrestling fan whatsoever, so I have very little awareness of pro wrestling games uh, because they just don't really interest me. What interested me about this one now, though, is I found out this is a WayForward developed game, and I'm kind of going for some of the early WayForward games just to get them in my collection. Um, it's not very good, <laughs> but what is unique about this one is it's not a true, like, uh, in the ring wrestling game, it's actually a beat 'em up, and um, you know you take licensed characters through uh, a pathway and things like that, and beat up people along the way. So at least it has that going for it. It's a little bit unique. Um, I did play it though; it's a bit rough around the edges, and the music's honestly pretty terrible. So um, I kind of expected a little more from Way Forward. They usually push the hardware pretty well, but this one isn't isn't all that hot. Um, I also realized there's a Bust a Move or Puzzle Bobble game I didn't own, and that's kind of unusual because I have a ton of them. Uh, this is Bust a Move Millennium, and um, really I think it's just an enhanced version of Bust a Move 4, which is also a Game Boy Color game that I've owned since it came out new. So this one came out a little bit later. Um, it's a Game Boy Color only release. It doesn't work with the original Game Boy, so I guess it's slightly enhanced. The problem is with some of these is Taito farmed these out to a company called Ultron in Japan, and they really didn't give the same care to them as the, the true Taito-developed Puzzle Bobble series games. So kind of lukewarm about that one. Uh, one that I would have also never bought until recently <laughs> is uh, Little Nicky, based on the terrible Adam Sandler movie that I did see on VHS back in the day. Um, I have no idea why they made a licensed game on this. That movie was, uh, you know, like R-rated and not really for children. And then, of course, they market a game that's teen-rated for children for the Game Boy Color. Um, I have not even popped this in yet, but I noticed for some reason this game is starting to go up in price. I cannot explain that. Um, one other weird thing about this one is it does actually support the Game Boy printer. So there is uh, some like character stills that you can make using the Game Boy printer with this. So kind of an odd curiosity for the console. Um, I remember the reviews of that game being terrible, but maybe it was just due to the license. Maybe it actually is a good game. I kind of doubt it will be, but we'll see. <laughs> and then the last thing I got for Game Boy Color is Blade. Um, this was not really intentional because I bought that other Blade game, but actually I read a really positive review of this game, or I watched a YouTube video of it that was extremely positive about this, and I would definitely back that up. This is actually a really great um, Double Dragon style beat-em-up for the Game Boy Color. Um, has some nice side-scrolling action, and the action, you know, the gameplay of it is really tight, so... I was surprised. Um, it also has some, like, into-the-screen gallery-style shooting, so it's kind of got, like, two games in one and it pulls that off pretty well too. So uh, whoever developed this game, they, they knew what they were doing with the hardware, and uh, I could definitely recommend this for the Game Boy Color. Um, I did get one Game Boy Advance game, uh, Loose, which I don't like to buy Game Boy Advance games loose, but this is one I don't see too often, and again, I started reading up on it, so I got curious. <laughs> this is Saber Wolf uh, for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, what I know now is that uh, this game, it has the, what is it, THQ publishing logo on it, but actually, if you look a little closer, this game was developed by Rare. Um, so I thought, hmm, that's actually worth a look. 
It turns out this is based on a very early um, European computer game called Saber Wolf from the early 80s. It's one of Rare's earliest developed titles, and this is like a more modern take on that computer game. Uh, this is not in the Rare Replay collection, but the original uh, Saber Wolf is. So if you you know want to play that cruder version of it, you can. Uh, but they did do quite a bit to make this game updated for the Game Boy Advance, so I think it was definitely worth checking out. Um, it's kind of a weird game concept. You're actually, um, the Saber Wolf is not your character, it's actually the enemy of the game, and you're just playing this like little scientist explorer guy trying to avoid the Saber Wolf and uh, you know find treasures and things like that. So um, I played it for you know about 30 minutes. I actually thought it was pretty fun, um, so I might pick this up and play it a little bit more. Uh, but I do think it's kind of a, a unique entry in the Game Boy Advance library. It's not just your typical licensed fare that it came out a lot on that console. Um, so next I got a DS game that, again, I'd just been putting on the back burner for a really long time. Um, I found this cheap in Nashville while I was out there, so I, and it was in great shape. Uh, this is Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword. Uh, this is one of the later Ninja Gaiden games that I'm usually not that interested in. I'm a huge fan of the early releases in the series, uh, but I just kind of think they lost the plot when they re uh, rebranded the character and brought him back and all that. Um, this one is a little bit unique, though, for the DS in that you hold the DS uh, sideways, I guess it is, so you kind of play it more like a storybook um, type of view and uh, gives it some unique levels and things like that. So kind of a, has a cool gimmick with it, at least, if nothing else. But um, I figured I'd go ahead, better go ahead and grab this just because the condition was great, and, you know, I'm probably not going to find one this nice again. So I uh, went ahead and got that. Uh, the very last portable game I got, an actual last game of the month, is a PS Vita game, which uh, another console I don't typically buy for a lot. Uh, but I got a really good deal on this. This is The Amazing Spider-Man for the Vita. Uh, surprisingly, this is, seems to be one of the rarer games on the Vita, or at least it just is high demand because it's Spider-Man. I don't know which. Um, I don't think this game's supposed to be that great. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, this game came out on you know consoles, and I don't remember anybody really saying it was anything special. Uh, but for some reason, like I said, the Vita version seems to be a little bit more difficult to find. So I uh, went ahead and grabbed this. I'm going to give it a play. If I don't like it, I'm going to sell it. But uh, I figured maybe there's something behind it because that game is kind of pricey. Uh, that is all the games I got this month, but I did get some other things related. So I'm going to show you those now. Uh, first thing, these is uh, another one of my con purchases. This wasn't planned by any means, but since I've been on this huge light gun kick, I got the uh, Japanese version of the Sega Saturn Stunner light gun. Um, so what's unique about this one is it is... All black in design, looks a little bit more serious, I guess. Uh, in the U.S., either due to regulations or just to appeal more to children, they recolored this whole shell, and all the U.S. ones are orange. So I do have uh, one or maybe even two of the U.S. ones. Uh, but when I saw the Japanese one and I knew you know, I wouldn't have to ship it, um, I thought this would be nice to have. So I think it's pretty cool looking. Um, stands up well next to the Gun Con now that you have uh, you know, both of them kind of in that, that darker shade. So pretty cool. Um, just happy to get that for the Saturn. I do want to mention too. There's a, a guy that uh, mods these things with a like a new trigger that gives you like really arcade um, style, you know, trigger. This one's kind of weak, um, and I think it's something you can even install yourself. So I'm going to look into that. I might actually mod this thing um, and put that in in the next month. Maybe something I can show you guys for a, uh, a how-to video if it's not too hard. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to show you the weirdest thing I got at the con. This was completely unplanned, but I figured, why would you pass up on something? quality like this. Um, this is a very weird unlicensed NES accessory that I have never seen before and this guy had tons of them that were all brand new sealed in the blister pack. So uh, found some new old stock I guess and just was selling off what he had. He was a nice guy. He actually sold me the light gun as well. Um, and I got the the power clip which is this goofy thing that snaps onto your NES uh, standard controller and then I guess the gimmick is um, you could put it like in between your legs and it has these rollers on the bottom of it where you can like roll it against your pants really fast and then it hits the buttons for you like super quick. So maybe you use it for something like track and field uh, where the goal is just to hit the buttons really quickly. <laughs> I can't really see that this would have a lot of um, comfort or uh, <laughs> need to use for many games. So I'm sure this thing was a complete failure. Um, they do actually go for a little bit on eBay. I was surprised. I just bought it out of curiosity, and then I got home and I looked this up, and I was like, really? People pay that for this? <laughs> but uh, I have a weird, um, large, long-term collection of strange NES peripherals, so I'm just going to add this to that. Um, I don't see myself opening this at any point, so I might as well just leave it in the package. But that was the weirdest thing I found at the Bloomington Normal Game Con by far, <laughs> and I had to have it. 
Uh, a couple other things I got were some manuals. Um, these are nothing too crazy, but I did get these at the con. Um, I got Space Shuttle Project for the NES. Um, it's not in great shape, but it is kind of one of the weirder titles. It's nothing great, though. I've played the game before, and it's not too good. Um, and then, oh, that fell out of there. Well, here's what the logo looked like for the Bloomington Normal Game Con. I didn't realize I had a sticker in there. And then, this one I'm kind of ashamed of. I thought I had this game. It was on my manual need list, and I'm like, surely I actually have that. I did not have the manual for Battletoads for NES, which I thought was really, really weird. But uh, I do have the box, so now this is complete. So, anyway, just a nice, another manual to add to my collection. Um, this is a uh, one game I also got at the con as an upgrade. Um, I, I'm going to sell my loose copy, but I got a complete-in-the-box copy of Image Fight. And um, I just want to say, like, I like the shooters on the NES. This one's never really been one of my favorites. But that box art on this is fantastic. <laughs> Like, they really did a nice job on the artwork with this game. Um, I don't think it really sold that well even then, but uh, Irem should be commended for this. I know Metal Storm gets a lot of praise for its artwork on the box, but they did just as good a job on this one. So, really appreciate uh, the artwork on this. It may be the actual arcade poster, because I think this game was initially an arcade game. Um, so, anyway, this was really nice and clean, and I got the, uh, the box and manual for it, and I'm just going to sell my loose copy. So, now I got a nice upgrade of that. Uh, but overall, like I said, the con was productive, the road trip was productive, so um, it was kind of nice to just have a good month of finds for a change rather than finding stuff locally and, and picking at scraps, it kind of feels like sometimes. But uh, I know it was a longer one, hopefully you enjoyed, um, I had a lot to show, so thank you very much for watching. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon, have a great day or night, wherever you are.